Three, two, one. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the UFD Tech Channel. We actually have a project that we started, how many months ago has it been? It's been a few. It's, it's been a few months. Anyways, it took us a while to get around to it, but now we're ready to do the ultimate MacBook Air upgrade because we have the Razer Core X right here and we have a 2080 Ti. We're gonna be yeah. slapping these things together and we're gonna tell you how we're gonna make it better than the last time we did this video after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Dot Tech Domains, my friends, in case you don't obviously understand what they do, they give you domain names with dot tech. We actually partnered with them to get UFD dot tech, especially since the channel's called UFD tech. And that's where we host our website, UFD deals. So now you just type in UFD dot tech and it takes you to the website. It makes sense if you are into tech and they have big brands that have gotten dot tech domains such as Viacom, CES, and even Intel. They're using dot tech domains. So why won't you? It makes sense. You're into tech, get a .tech domain. So if you're interested in getting your own .tech domain, you can go to go.tech forward slash UFD and check it to see if the domain you want is available. And if so, you can use coupon code UFD tech to get 80% off one and five year subscriptions. That's a great deal. 80% off using coupon code UFD tech. Go do it. Remember, if you're into tech, get a .tech domain. So my friends, we have already done this video where we did ray tracing with a MacBook Air, but we ran into some bottlenecks mainly with the MacBook Air itself. So that was a bad idea. And in case you don't remember, we had a MacBook that I broke and then I fix it, sponsored us to fix Reese's MacBook and then we sold it and got him a new MacBook Air because he's a Mac boy. And you can rage at him down in the comments. Everybody can complain about his life choices down below. Anyways, so what we're gonna do today is in order to alleviate some of the bottlenecks that's caused by this MacBook Air is we're gonna put liquid metal on the cooler What's this thing called? What the frick is a cooler called? Cooler? CPU cooler <laughs> for, for the MacBook, especially because one of the biggest issues with this setup is the fact that the CPU thermal throttles itself. That's how Apple gets away with such sleek designs. You just cut the performance, make sure it's dissipating the heat really poorly, and then you're good to go. That's how you do it. So today, we're gonna help that a little bit by adding some liquid metal onto the MacBook Air, and we're gonna do that now. Now, yeah, yeah. So my friends, we're gonna open this puppy up with the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit. You can check out these down below at iFixit.com forward slash UFD Tech. Do it. They have great tools. So I think we need, uh, what is it, the P5 driver? It's a pentalobe. It's amazing. So from what I've read on the iFixit repair guides, all you have to do is remove all of the screws. And then once you're done doing that, you just pop open the lid and then you have access to the cooler underneath. This is actually quite terrible. That is so disappointing, look at this. Look at how small the heatsink for their processor is. That's just, that's not, that's, that's like half a finger, not even, a quarter of a finger. This isn't gonna work, because the heatsink is aluminum. Liquid metal dissolves aluminum. Okay, we need to come up with a better solution for this. Okay, well we're gonna figure this out and we'll get back to you guys. Pause the video for an indefinite amount of time. Okay, friends, we're back. It's been, what, a week since we tried to film this? Um, so we had the idea of potentially going with like a copper uh, leaf, essentially, and putting that there and doing liquid metal. Um, and that was an okay idea. Then our second idea, wherever the heck I put all of this stuff, <laughs> then we thought we could go with the carbonite graphite pad, but the smallest one that was available to us uh, which is the 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter, unfortunately is just, it's kind of way too big. And also one of the issues that you have with the Carbonaut uh, thermal pads is the fact that they're electrically conductive. So not wanting to short out anything on the MacBook here, we decided to just simply go with the best thermal paste that we can find on the market, which is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. But then we'll have a plan where we're gonna put this on the stand right here. I probably shouldn't be touching rare raw PCB like that. And then we'll have a fan blowing over the heatsink so that there's an active cooler for this seven watt chip and hopefully something more substantial than just a little, like we can get a better boost clock on the um, 
the, the mobile CPU here. So next step now is to clean off whatever thermal bonding material they use on this because that is some of the darkest thermal material I've ever seen on a chip. And it's also super thick. Like that looks really caked on there. The CPU block looks really clean with the, also the GPU there, the integrated GPU. So everything looks pretty good there. Okay, well, that's probably as good as I'm gonna get it. All right, now let's move on to the crown nut. Ah, stop coming out. I think the th part that ticks me off the most about the MacBook Air is that it has a fan connected to nothing. It's just, there's just a fan here. It's, what is that, what is that cooling? It's, it's not attached to any heat pipes. It's got nothing going on. Like, is it just cooling the, the keyboard? I guess like some of the heat's gonna dissipate onto the to the chassis itself and then it's like blowing it out, I guess. I like what is what is that fan doing really? Bam, done. Alright, now slide on in there. Cool. Now we'll get it all set up. We'll get the game set up on Windows, and then we'll come back to you, hopefully with a good solution. Okay, my friends, it is the next day and I have spent the entire morning working on this project to figure out what are the best results we can get with this MacBook Air and the results are actually kind of interesting. The whole point of this video was to just combine the 20 ATI, but I learned a lot about how Apple has designed the MacBook Air. One of the reasons why we wanted to change the thermal paste and work on the cooling is because no matter what we do with this uh, i5Y processor that it, it, Apple has put in this MacBook is that it always hits 100 degrees Celsius. What's gonna differ there is the boost clocks. So I, I don't know if you guys remember this video from four years ago by Linus Tech Tips where where he water cooled a MacBook and got over double the performance. It's kind of the same issue that we're still experiencing today. Apple designs their products to thermal throttle. So we are trying to find our best way to eliminate that thermal throttle bottleneck and get the most out of the 2080 Ti that's in this Razer core. And fun fact, I have experimented with all of the different configurations that we could have. I had this bottom cover of the MacBook on, I've had it off, I've had it on this laptop cooler, yikes. Um, I've had it with a fan blowing, this, this janky one right here, and I've had it with a bowl of ice with the fans blowing the ice onto the, the, the MacBook Air. And what I found is that if there is no active cooling, if we just leave the MacBook by itself, having the base plate of the laptop on it is going to give you the best performance out of everything. The stock performance, meaning we don't change anything, with the cover on versus with the cover off was actually quite substantial in our Cinebench score. We got 222 points with the base plate on versus 196 with it off. But when we actually have some sort of active cooling going on, it is better to have the base plate off and keep the fan directly pointed at the heat sink that's on the bottom. So for getting the best performance, it's actually recommended by me for this experiment to remove the base plate for everything that we're gonna do. And then we tried to experiment, is it better with a laptop cooler? Is it better to have an ice bucket directly under the laptop cooler? Or should we have a bucket of ice or a bowl of ice rather, and then have this fan on top blowing into the secondary laptop cooler? And that, the last one, is the one that worked the most effectively. That is the highest Cinebench score that we got, coming in at 245 points, which is about 50 points higher than the lowest score we receive, which is without the base plate and no active cooling. So we saw an improvement of a good 25% by just changing the thermal configurations. So that was what I have learned this morning trying to figure this out. Now it's time to actually get into playing the ray tracing because that's the whole point of putting an RTX 2080 Ti with the MacBook Air is so that we can do ray tracing with the freaking the laptop. So let me go grab my bowl of ice and then we're gonna play games. So I put this in here from earlier. It's water mixed with ice, melted. So it's a full bowl full. Hopefully it won't melt on us, but we should get some decent thermal performance with this thing. Uh, the, the ice isn't exactly leveled here. So we're gonna have some fan grinding. So if you come back here, you can see that this fan is blowing directly up off of the cold air that's in this uh, bowl right here, blowing into the fan that's on this laptop cooler, which is blowing directly onto the CPU heatsink right there, my friends. It is the world's 
jankiest setup for a MacBook besides actually water cooling it, but we can't do that since this one has an active fan, whereas the MacBook that Linus water cooled didn't have an active fan. But even, even now we're seeing temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius, which, I mean, it's just how the Y processor works, or at least that's how Reese's work. Okay, so we've already done the Port Royal benchmark and what the score that we got was over double what we received with the RTX 2060. The 2060 managed 3,188 points. The 2080 Ti that's in here has managed 6,737. There we go. Options, uh, graphic options, RTX, yes, desktop. Let's do 2560 by 1440. So the last time we did this at 1440p, what happened was we got about 20 FPS uh, total and we were clearly CPU bound. Okay, now we're at about 55. We're getting right around the 60 FPS mark at 1440p with the MacBook Air. So the ray tracing's working pretty gosh dang good right now. Ah. The last time I also dropped it to 720p to see what it would look like and we got about 100 FPS. So, oh, look at those reflections. Oh, I can't see. Let me just light it up with my gun. Look at that. Oh my freaking goodness. You can see the fan in the water. Oh, look at this. Wow, this is amazing, 60 FPS, dang. On a MacBook Air, you can get a fully ray traced 1440p Quake 2 experience. 60 FPS, gosh dang. 1280 by 720. Oh, that's right, oh, that's right, 187 FPS. There we go, this is 144 hertz. Smooth as butter, look at this. We are getting an insane amount more frame rate on this than we were with the 2060. And we were CPU bound last time, and now the CPU is not even working because, oh my, wow, okay. So what we can see here is that the CPU is boosting up to three gigahertz, whereas before when we were doing it with the 2060, this was barely hitting 2.2 gigahertz. So we're about 800 megahertz higher than we were previously. And we're only running at 70 degrees Celsius. This is amazing. I could totally play this. So that's great. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's just do a couple benchmarks with Metro Exodus and uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and see what kind of frame rate we get with those. But that was, Quake 2 was super playable with an RTX card, 2080 Ti, freaking yes. Come on Metro Exodus, why don't you run? Now my mouse is gone, fantastic. No! Oh, it looks like the, the external drive dropped out. We're gonna try that one more time. It was actually slightly successful. Why are you spilling out water? Checking chips out. Oh my gosh. It's wet. This is not, okay, let's uh. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this again. I think that bowl's too full. This is not a smooth experience. Part of the reason is because we have to run it off of the external SSD. And so we're running this giant mess of hyperdrive expansion cables, living the dongle life with the Thunderbolt connected to the Razer core. This is connected to the external. This is connected to the fan. The, the fan is then connected to the keyboard and then the mouse is connected. To, it's, it's, it's a crazy world we live in. All right, Metro Exodus hated life, but now we're back with uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which we will have DLSS and ray tracing, which is working, but we need to get past the screen. You can see that the CPU is pegged at 100% the entire time. It's just, there we go. DLSS is on, ray tracing should be on. Graphics, let's see, graphics, ray traced shadows, ultra, perfect. Quit. I quit. The heck. The good news is we got Quake 2 to run. So that's a that's a win and it ran over 144 FPS at 720p. There's wins all around right now. Let's go ahead and try this again and see if it actually boots. We'll come back. I quit. Screw this kid. Okay, friends, I'm freaking tired of waiting for it. I got it, it's all good, nothing broke. All right, I'm tired of waiting for crap to load and I, I don't have time for this anyways. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> we got Quake to run at over double the FPS of what we got last time, and partially thanks to the cooling of the MacBook Air, partially thanks due to the fact that the 2080 Ti has better ray tracing capabilities than a 2060. But I'm actually really impressed with this project, actually having an external GPU dock on NVIDIA for Windows on the MacBook. It's a little... It's a little hard to get working, um, I will say that, but at the end of the day, um, if it didn't have such a trash CPU, this would actually be a legitimate option for gaming. Um, the possibilities are endless from here. We could potentially liquid cool the MacBook Air. I have to figure out how we could get a water block onto that freaking heat sink right there, but uh, we could maybe figure out something. But then there's also the possibility that we could look into doing this with a MacBook Pro, or if you guys don't watch this video and nobody cares, we're just gonna end the project here. So it's up to you. Let me know what you guys want. Uh, share the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed if you like that. Don't forget about today's video sponsor. Dot Tech Domains, the place to make sure that you have Dot Tech stuff, okay? You want Reese Dot Tech, he's into tech. Look at that guy. He's hoodie tech, hoodie dot tech. Do it. Go to go dot tech forward slash UFD, check and see if your domain's available, and then enter coupon code UFD tech. Save 80% off one in five year subscriptions. Do it, my friends. Go check them out. And that's the end of the MacBook Air plus 2080 Ti saga. Uh, yeah, I've already told you to do all the things. I'm going to shut this down and cry myself to sleep, especially since I have a migraine. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Love you too. Bye.